afternoon, James. <laughs> afternoon, Russ. Uh, this, uh, look, it, it, I'm going to just say it's a great pleasure to show you your boat. Um, and thank you for placing your trust in us. Right, it's a uh, pleasure. And I just want to give you a little tour, um, explain to your um, followers why we've done some things and what we've got in the Long Reach 58. So, so I'm really interested in how the whole shape has come about. So how have you been able to achieve the, the speed and the, the long range performance with this hull and, the, and also the being able to beach the hull on the, um, with the grounding kill. So I'm really interested in how over the 40 years you've been boat building that you've come to you've come to this hull design. Well, the, this is what's commonly called a, di a full displacement hull. It's not semi-displacement, it's full displacement. And it's quite like the att attributes of a torpedo. Yep. It's full displacement, very low drag, and it's thin. Yep. Um, Malcolm Tennant was the first to come up with it, and it's very simple. Uh, low, low surface area hull, Yep. round sections in the front, V sections forward, and a nice fine entry. And when we move down to the back, we'll see how we have a counter of a propeller, stops ventilation, feeds the propeller well. Um, now on this particular one, we, on this, on all the, this type of design, we put the, the chine in up here, to two functions, to deflect the water. Right. Is the external function, but internal function, we bring the, the living floor space. Okay. So it's wider inside. Now, one of the reasons why people don't like this, day, this, this type of hull is it's too narrow for the accommodation. And we think we've overcome that with this size boat. And we put some extra, extra length, extra height in the, in the freeboard below the chine. Um, we've got an upper chine pretty much to protect the windows and tell you the truth it just looked good on the drawing yeah <laughs> uh, we've got lots of windows lots of light in the side um so and we've got you've got a small oh the docking keels docking very, keels yeah docking keels very intriguing. really intrigues me very important to me for cruising in shallow water and dock and beaching the boat like if you're going to cruise be able, be able to beach the boat and and not and protect your running gear in case you're caught or you either intend to go on the beach and um, for cleaning I guess. and cleaning you just in between or, or in, in, yeah you don't have to fork out the big fees for for the Andy. travel li travel lift and I'll, I'll take you down to a, a little boat on the beach now which we prepared earlier so this is it, John. This is it. This is why. This is why. This is not the long reach, but this is not right. This is the baby player play 52. So, but as we can see, the reason we have a docking keel, so you can do this easily and safely. This is great. You see the propellers and the rudder is all protected. And if you are inclined, you can paint it or fix it. Fix the skin fitting, whatever. You've got that ability to, to do it. So if you're cruising, you, it's part of your self-sufficiency. So that's way better than me diving underneath. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's nice thing to do. Yeah, I love it. Um, we can let's go down through the hull, and we'll explain. Well, one, one, one other point we want to take is the shape of the bows, right? Full length, the, lo the longer waterline length you have, the, the better beam length ratio you have. And it just, just causes less wave-making resistance. Okay. And, and... It sure is a beautiful... <laughs> Can you just get a shot of that, that hole down there and the... the bridge there, it, it really is a beautiful place. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a lovely blend of curves. 
Um, we've, we've got a little overhang here that just stops the water from, from climbing. Um, and we just, it was public opinion really that led us, led us down the path of this type of bow shape. And the whole construction and deck? All vinyl ester, resin, uh, and PVC core, super strong and fairly buoyant actually, just on its own. I can take this from here up to Japan and through Alaska. You can, and over and you can. I'm not saying it's an icebreaker, <laughs> but the fir all of this first portion of the hull is sealed. So it's sealed to the chine and there's individual um, chambers and then there's uh, bow thrusters around about here somewhere. So we've got sealed bulkheads. Sealed bulkheads all throughout there. So in the unlikely event of you banging into something, you can probably handle it a, yep. a fair bit. Okay, wave breaking bow. Just it's looks beautiful. 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 <laughs> it's, uh, it's nine parts beauty. Yeah. Um, and then, then really another nine for the function of just having a soft arrive into a head sea. Yeah. Uh, that, that's the other good thing about the long bows is the weight's moved aft and the buoyancy's moved forward. It just helps with um, head seas, yeah. following seas. Um, can't wait to drive this into a sea. Yes. Um, okay. okay, now we're down at the aft section. Um, we'll start with the, with the shape of the hull. It's, it's at a, an ideal foil shape to feed the propeller at high speed. And the prop shaft is, uh, around, is quite low, so we have good tip clearance for the propeller. And we try and keep the propeller horizontal as possible. Um, we've got about one and a half degrees, two degrees um, pitch in the, in the shaft. That's only to get the engine up into a more serviceable area. And that's coupled with the Python drive to give us thrust bearing and raise the engine a little bit. So the shape, uh, the shape at the rear here hmm. increases the water flow towards yeah, the Yeah, just, that... yep. Yeah, it's, it's you, you wouldn't believe it. I'll tell you the story about why it's this shape. I was at SeaWorld with the kids and I was photographing a seal yeah. sloughing through the, and I saw the shape of the seal Okay. And then, but that, at the same time, we were studying the the uh, the dynamic aerodynamics of the flow, and it just happened to be the same. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I can, you know, it makes sense to me. You can you can see that the water coming along there, and it's got to increase yeah. its speed to. to and we've with. we've had the CFD tests done on this shape, and there's there's very little pressure pressure spots. There's a a, a warm pressure spot on top of the propeller. Yeah. Um, but. Uh, um, it's very clean, uh, drag-wise, this shape. And yeah, here, here we go. And here's the, the docking keel. The propeller, the propeller's about here, right? And the, and the top of the, the bottom of the rudder is clear of it. So it's, it's beachable. You don't, you don't have any worry about grounding it. And we can, as you can see, there's boats sitting on two in four blocks. So oh, it's, and then I'll just move up to one of our early of our first life-saving devices. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And the steps outboard with a hand grip. Yeah. Just in case you have a incident. And, and you need to get out. And, and you can get out. The, stair, yeah, the stairs fold out. This is just... And rest again. Well, this, the stairs will come out, out here. Yeah. And down level at the bottom of the water. Um, then the rubbing strip, and then our, uh, our hydraulic deck will be you know, and come down so you can... So it's 1.6 by 4 metres, yeah. and it'll go 500 in the water. And right up flush. And, and look at, yeah, so it'll extend the, extend the cockpit floor like a huge extension to the cockpit. Yeah. I really like that. Yeah, and the, the main thing we'd like to, to thank all our owners is we don't take credit for the complete design. We, it comes from the owners, what we want, and it gives us the greatest pleasure to deliver what Russ 
Peter and their future clients exactly what they want. So um, we'll just build on what we've got and what you want. Um, okay, let's take a tour in, inside. Let's have a look. <laughs> This is a great big uh, rear transom <laughs> area, and yeah. when that platform goes down, and we can have it it's way out level. here, yeah. So we get this whole six and a half meters by uh, what is it? One point. I think we've, it's four meters by one point six. No, by the time you add this. Oh, one. this, yeah, it goes right across. So this just be a full. It's going to look great. And we've got a very simplified uh, hydraulic lift from. So it's uh, got two electric. Motors, yeah, with a, and they're lifted by. They're not hydraulic. They're they're Dyneema uh, cord cord lifting. It's gonna it's going to uh, work quite well. And then we have a, a, a horizontal overhead crane that yeah protrude out the end, just drop a hook down, so that we can pick the tender up mm -hmm. and take it out sideways and drop it in yeah, the water. Yeah, and then you've got this huge dock. To the dinghy dock. The dinghy dock. Um, you so our own dinghy dock. You got your own dinghy dock. <laughs> now we're here at Davco Cranes, which uh, have designed the lifting platform and the overhead cranes. And here's the man himself, George. <laughs> <laughs> so, George, we spent plenty of time working out this um, design for the platform and the overhead crane. We have. But um, we've come up with a really good, really good system. Yeah. So this is this is bigger than the one I'm getting, uh, the overhead crane. So this is what this is a 500. This is the 500. You're getting the same amount of reach and the same amount of height as the 350 that you're getting. Yeah. So you've got the backup so you can always lift off the back of the boat back in the position where you need to be. Yeah. So you'll have the same. Actually, you'll be the same boom length and approximately the same size. Which is about 3.2 meters. 3.2 you need. Yeah. yeah to get you back into place where you need to be. Fully hydraulic, no chance of falling over the side, no chance of a singing tender, nothing's gonna hit you in a bad day. Just pick it up, send it around by yourself. And, and uh, so maintenance wise, maintenance what's wise, gotta happen with, what have I gotta do? They're painted in PPG two pack, so yeah. everything's been treated first. The things to do for maintenance, like keep electricity, keep everything depowered. Yeah. Keep, with the hydraulic came, make sure that the motor's got a negative feed so that you're keeping when the motor negative poles back and forth, yeah. when it's being used, it doesn't blow the paint off. So if you keep it always controlled to negative, it'll just discharge the current away you go. Wash it down with fresh water, it's painted like a car, marine paint. Polish it, you only do everything else on the boat. Flush out the end, give it out again and keep the salt water out the end. Okay. If you're on the top deck like you, it's probably not such an issue. If it's a four deck crane, it needs to be just flushed Oh uh, yeah, top. with the wave coming yeah, over. Yeah, just everything, normal salt wash down. And stainless steel. Stainless steel cylinders. Brands, like, wow. Yeah, full stainless steel cylinder. So. You've got your proper stainless steel 316 barrel, you've got a hard chrome stainless steel shaft. Yeah. Now with the counterbalance valve here and the hard lines on this side, yep. see how we've got no hoses and it doesn't go down? That doesn't operate till 3,500 PSI, so it'll hold the crane up even with the weight on it. When you take a few buster hose, or if you have any sort of failure, it can't go down. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah, so it's got the resiliency, it's got the backup system for a big crane. So no matter what happens, you can't get crushed underneath it, nothing bad like that, but it's, it stainless steel lines. So you guys have been building these for a while, right? 1984, it was wow. the original DAPCO, and we came along in 1997, and now we've just come back with a new range of all the Series 3 and 4 cranes, they all look the same. We've finally gotten to the point we wanted to be in. How many of these you make a year? We probably make 100 a year. Wow. So. We've got to the point with our own machinery now that we don't have supply issues. Yep. So we've got and the hydraulics company we've teamed up, they've got a Mazark five access CNC, they can build a gland, they can build a cylinder every 15 minutes, full parts. So the saw that cuts the barrels can't keep up with the, the speed of the machine. So they have to buy another saw <laughs> to cut faster to keep the barrels square. So that's where we're at with that stuff. All of our stuff here is kind of our own laser cutter. Yeah. Um, a lot of the engineering parts are still made by us and our own machinery and gears. Yeah. It's Gold Coast. Everything's Gold Coast, so there's no supply issues. Uh, all Australia made, love it. All Australia made, every single thing. This was last oh, Thursday, made, it's now Friday. <laughs> so six to seven days ago, this was starting to be built in the afternoon. Wow. So we don't have the old days, it's long turnaround times. Now it's just succession of Lego and laser cut parts. Much stronger. This, all in house, see. so you've got full control. Full control, the timing, everything for the painting, so we know how it's painted from actually right Royal Avenue. We know that it's painted by us. We know it's been treated by us. 
I mean, we've all worked together. To get no one else bucks. to blame. That's right. <laughs> so you're, you're <laughs> also... <laughs> it's too big to blame. So, um, and you also do uh, platforms. We do. So we've got a hydraulic duckboard every... We try to get got a good week four out, we get three out. We've got a new hydraulic stair coming, which we're about to release. Yeah. Um, we do hydraulic platforms in Maritime Riviera. We have done for 15 years. Yeah. We also do a lot of retail platforms. We do right up to a tonne and a half. A big boat. We've just picked up a C2185 Super Sport on Horizon. So uh, the full true tonne rigging with the people in it and still lifting it happily. Wow. So. <laughs> okay. So you know this cockpit because this is this has been built to your requirements. Um, this is just mocked up now. This is what we'll we like to do for our customers is mock up what we plan to do and what we want to redesign. So this is the barbecue area and there'll be a high, uh, electric lift window electric here. Electric window into a slot. Great. Push and a, a button. <laughs> push a, push a button. <laughs> um, uh, like, uh, uh, entry door on port and starboard and glass sliding doors across the back. So even though it's enclosed, we can drop this window completely out of sight, open this door up and pull the center opening sliding doors open. So we then have um, the perfect outdoor space. Yeah, and you've got the ventilation, coolness, we've got some air con from inside pouring in here if you need it. Yeah, so we're here at the Frigamar stand and uh, one of the Australian distributors, Gary. So um, we're going to have Frigamar on on our boat for a number of reasons and Gary's going to explain about the uh, efficiency of it and the power usage. So, you know, everybody can have these units. You can see how small and compact it is and uh, also available now or shortly in 24 volt which will be 24 and 48 volt. 24 and 48 volt which will be completely amazing but for us we've got the 240 model um, and you can roll over in bed without turning the generator on and uh, be warm or cold whatever you want to do for endless amounts of hours so yeah the startup current well, there there basically, there basically is no startup current. Yeah. So the way this system works is you have uh, the compressor. It runs on a hertz, 20 percent hertz yeah. up to a hundred percent hertz. Yeah. So, so when we first switched this uh, unit on, we're drawing two amps. Two amps. Two amps. That's right? all. Two and amps at 20, 240 volts. Two forty volts. Yes. Yeah. And that's at that's at twenty hertz. Yeah. So so basically, it will ramp up slowly up to the 100 hertz and as the boat cools then we'll ramp back down to 20 hertz we actually don't cycle on and off okay because cycling on and off is when you get that start up on your say Dometic units I yeah. shouldn't say that but um, yeah. with the Frigamar we're basically ramp it's like your inverter system at home yeah we're basically we don't shut down we just ramp up ramp down so pretty much any boat with a bit of solar and a lithium battery. Absolutely. Will be able to run these. Yeah. So have you have you got any have they done any figures on like what a daily use of of uh, a well sixteen or a like I don't know about the the side but um fifty percent reduction doc. Yeah. Fifty fifty percent reduction in, in, in power on normal use normal use. Yeah, this is Doc use. everybody, this is another main man from <laughs> Frigamar. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm reading in the back there. It says start and run. Well, this is this is a different. Concept. That's a different thing. A different okay. Thing. This is basically. We don't need any no, of that added need stuff. That. The, this, reason, the reason we've we've got these, another product we've got here now, is because the aircons out there, you have to have them yeah. to reduce all, all your uh, in, in rush amps, start, start current. Okay. This we don't need. Okay. So anyone thinking about this uh, price and backup service and uh, installation that's all readily available for absolutely. you guys? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That's, uh, we base ourselves on um, installation service. Um, so for any any um, boat thinking about retrofitting um, and they're running 
20 kilowatt generators or something like that. Can you make a significant saving to those customers? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, 20 kilowatt. Uh, we recent we've recently put in a couple of uh, inverter chillers, which you had on your previous boat. Yeah. And um, we're proving it's two thirds less power. Two thirds. Yeah. It's quite so, amazing. How do we get invaded by bugs or inclement weather? Yeah. Push a button, shut a door, and we're locked away. Yeah. Security wise, also, when we you leave lock, the boat, you can lock it here, here, and here. I really like the addition of the cabinets we've got either side of the cockpit. Um, I love my fishing. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I've got something on here, I tell you. Oh. oh, oh, come on. Hey, what is the big news, Russ? Barra. At last, a beautiful <laughs> big barramundi. In, uh, in here we've got fishing rods. Um, we're going to put a dive compressor, dive tanks. <laughs> One on the other side has enough room. We go around there and have a look. Yeah, this, is, clean it. this is all very good to be able to work with a boat builder that will listen <laughs> and uh, you know give us what we want. Because uh, so in here we'll have we can have a, a hanging rail and our dive vests and and uh, snorkeling gear and everything, so a key lock door here, put it all in, it's all out here. Mm -hmm. And it's all uh, purpose built for the outdoor toys. Huge area here, um, which on the other side I'm going to utilise with a, uh, a fish cleaning yeah. table, which will be recessed in. So there he is, fresh fish. Look at that for a fillet. Mm. Very nice. And how are you going, Keith? I'm going. You like this cutting table of Russell's? I do. This is the bomb schnizzle. <laughs> Hinge up, so. Well, that's on the other side of the barbecue, so you, yes. can, you can clean them and cook them. Clean, and put a strap on. <laughs> Super fresh fish. <laughs>